Welcome to the 48th Annual Symposium on the American Indian. This session is titled The Long Walk and the Trail of Tears, Boarding Schools and Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, MMIW, Told Through Graphic Design, with Trinity Manuelito, who is Navajo, and Dr. Jeffrey Tony with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. As you probably know, this session is one of many that are included in this year's virtual agenda. Please do take time to visit our website at nsuok.edu slash symposium for more details regarding the agenda. All sessions will be recorded and made available in the coming weeks. My name is Elisa Douglas. I am the Student Program Coordinator for the Center for Tribal Studies and welcome you today to this presentation. Um, joining us today is Trinity uh, Wahaya Manuelito, who is in her second year of her under undergraduate education at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She is majoring in electrical science and engineering and planning to minor in economics. Trinity is Navajo. Her clan is Bitterwater, and she is from Goodyear, Arizona. Trinity hopes to attend law school, and in her free time, she enjoys spending time with her brother, her friends, and her two dogs named Man uh, Mango and Maxwell. Dr. Jeffrey H. Tony earned a BS in chemistry from the University of Virginia and a MS and PhD in chemistry from Northwestern University. He was a postdoctoral fellow in molecular biology at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Harvard Medical School, and a postdoctoral fellow in chemical biology at MIT. Tony is currently provost and vice president for research and faculty at Keene University. He serves concurrently as a visiting professor at MIT in the Department of Linguistics and Philosophy and as a visiting scholar in the Department of the History of Science at Harvard University. Dr. Tony has been a member and representative of Sigma Xi, the Scientific Research Honors Society for the AAS Science and Human Rights Coalition since 2009. He is also a member of the advisory board for Surgibox and MITD Lab Initiative. He recently received a SciComic Award from Sigma Xi in Science Talk for his work in science communication. Please welcome Trinity and Dr. Tony. Hi everyone, Shay Trinity, Ohio Many Lisa again. Shay. Um, my name is Trinity and I'm a Navajo and I'm in my second year at my undergraduate studies at MIT. I am majoring in electrical science engineering and minoring in economics. Um, so that's been fun. But recently I have begun a project project under my mentor, Professor Tony. Um, this happened this past January. It was focused on like our identity and like our culture and how that fit into our university. And this really intrigued me because it was very different from every like STEM project I've done or any class I've done so far. Um, so my project was centered on graphic designs that I made myself focused on aspects of Native American history and culture. Um, so going into this project with a very open mind, I looked to explore my own identity and quite frankly, I was just trying something new. Um, but this project grew into something so much bigger than I had imagined the few months I've been working on it. Um, one of the biggest takeaways I have so far is that art is such a great way to share stories and convey emotions. And I hope that my art can help reach people and teach them about a part of history they may not be familiar with and also spread awareness about some topics that people may not know about. Um, so today I plan to share two of my designs, one on boarding schools and another on missing indigenous, indigenous women and girls, MMIW. G will be used to refer to it since it's much easier to say. Um, and in addition to my work, I want to highlight the fact that there's so much artwork out there right now. Um, so we will also discuss another piece of art not made by me. The piece I chose focuses on the scorched earth policy and I'll delve into who the artist is when we get to it. Um, so now I want to let my mentor briefly introduce himself. Yeah, Ate. I wanted to say hello to you and, and Navajo is my way to uh, honor and celebrate uh, Trinity's culture. Uh, I've been uh, privileged to uh, serve as her mentor. I'm also happy to welcome my faculty sponsor at MIT, Professor Michelle DeGraff, who I see has joined us for this conversation. Um, 
He's been a fantastic supporter and he and I worked together on an initiative called the MIT Haiti Initiative that also uh, uses culture as a critical part of how students and faculty can learn in different ways. Uh, to me, this is very important because uh, in my view as an educator, too often students culture and language is not counted as part of their education and in some ways is even overlooked. I want us today to look at this very differently that culture and language should be celebrated because this is an individual's identity. And I believe if we respect and understand each other's identity across this diverse nation and our world, we will be able to uh, better benefit society and it benefits teaching, learning and research at universities. I feel very strongly about this. I've uh, used the term uh, undervalued currency of culture and education. So I just wanted us to think about that as Trinity shares her work. I wanted to uh, thank her for the opportunity to uh, mentor her. I've learned a lot from her. I hope she's learned something from this experience that you'll hear about. And um, I will pass it on to Trinity. Thank you. Thank you. So today I wanted you to keep two main ideas in mind that you can learn history through art and also art can connect people and like build relationships. So today we're going to hopefully create an environment where we can enable people to learn and share ideas through discussion. So it'd be great if you guys can speak up and share your opinions when it is time. I'm not gonna ask you to turn on your camera, but if you feel comfortable, please do so. It's a lot easier to talk to actual faces rather than just names on a screen. Um, so looking forward to like how I want these discussions to go down. We're going to start with each piece of art. I will share my screen and it'll be like right in front of you. And so I'll have you, look at it and take it in um, for about two minutes and just gather your initial thoughts, um, any ideas or questions, anything you really are thinking within these two minutes. Um, then I'll open up the floor and we'll just see where that takes us, um, please one at a time. And then we'll try to look at like what it is about, what are they trying to say, and then we'll just go from there. A few ground rules before I share the first uh, graphic design. Um, I want us all to be non-judgmental and respect one another and their backgrounds. I think that is the most important thing to creating a um, good environment for discussion and learning. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and share my screen and we can begin our two minutes of taking it in. Okay, we'll go ahead and start bringing it back in. Does anyone want to start us off with some initial thoughts they have? Hi, yate. Um, she Farina King Yinishe. Uh, Bilagan Initial, Doki Ani Bashishin, Bilagan and Dashache, Dosinijani Dashanale, Akodego at San Nishle. I just want to say hi to like some the neck in there. Thank you, Trinity, for sharing this and your work. Um, I, some thoughts about this is that um, I've actually talked to a lot of uh, boarding school survivors, including my father, um, and the soap would come up a lot, um, such that it was almost a joke and not in a way of um, diminishing the trauma and the horror of it, but actually um, some, what I remember of talking to some of my elders about um, their experiences at boarding school 
was they, uh, one of them said, I just always tasted that soap in my mouth. And he kind of laughed, chuckled. Um, it was almost like coping with um, trying to have that humor in his life as a way of, of like teasing or, or um, seeking humor. But I, I could tell in sense, you know, it's a lot deeper than that, you know? And um, even though I was there, I'm talking to elders about their experiences and they can look back retrospectively and um, it's like a survivor story in a way of um, surviving and, and experiencing that soap. But um, for me, it just um, always is like a, a hit in my gut um, because I, I'm of the descent where I'm learning Navajo and really sensing what a what at risk it is, what is at risk of us not knowing our languages. And though my mother is um, English white settler, um, it, we did not speak Navajo among my siblings or learn it with my father who was fluent and that's what he knew fluently. Um, and I know other families who have both Navajo parents um, or both Native American parents who are speakers of the language and they don't continue to speak that um, with their children. So it, it's really uh, painful and difficult um, to you know, look at this and to think of all the stories and the people who are personal to me of, um, I, I think you really embodied this well with the bubbles of what's being at risk there. You know? Thank you. Yeah, I just want to hop in uh, and just say that I definitely um, like what you're saying resonates with me in terms of the soap. Um, I actually included it because when my grandfather told me stories, the soap is really what stuck out to me. And so I really want to make that the focal piece. Um, so thank you for your um, comment. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Um, Shelly Dawado, uh, uh, I actually work with the um, on the Carlisle Indian School project here up in Pennsylvania. And I don't know if you intended to do it, but the very first thing I was drawn to was it almost looks like a spoon that's in the woodwork um, for American Indian and um, boarding schools there. Um, and then I had the same sorts of reaction as, as Dr. King, but one of the things that was kind of interesting for me was um, one of the things that I do is I go through all of the archival material and try to put the children's um, identities at least where I can do the best that I can um, with their, their, their true tribal identities. And so a lot of the children are, are mislabeled with monikers. Um, they're often not even with the correct um, tribal designation, if that is even a term that is being used. And it's kind of complicated to try and explain that, but it was spoon fed. Everything was spoon fed to them of what they needed to have and what they should look like. And, and that really, really resonated with me. And the other thing that was interesting is you have the crucifixes um, down at the bottom. And I think one of the things that's really interesting for me with Carlisle is that well, religion was definitely a part of it, unlike a lot of the other schools, it wasn't the predominant part of it. And I think that the way that it's just a touch where you have to really look at it in order to see it, um, it really spoke to me as far as my own personal journey of doing what I do. So I appreciate that, Wado. Thank you. I really liked your comment. Um, I didn't even think about um, the spoon that you noticed in the, morning, the middle, um, but it is a great connection. Is there anyone else? I'd like to say that um, I, I'm so moved by by your by your story, but, and and that image of the soap and the kill the Indian. You know, I myself I'm from Haiti, and it reminds me of the way in which so in Haiti most children, when when they speak the the home language, which is Haitian Creole, which is like what every child in Haiti grows up speaking, in the school, they are often told that if they speak Creole, they have to they have to the tongues have to be washed and and some teachers would would use soap to wash the tongues so the tongues can be cleaned off of the of the Haitian Creole language because French is what's going to make them human and this reminds me of the power 
of of language to to erase our culture and and so i'm so pleased by the work that you're doing with um, professor tony because it's again it's showing the, the importance of 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 language as a as a human right so in killing the indian they also try to kill the languages of the of the of the first nations in 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 this continent so it, it, i find it very moving because it shows the it it, it goes across countries it's what's happening what, what happened to, you know, to your people also happened to the people in the caribbean to the people in africa um the use of hegemony to to erase our culture but okay there are folks like you who are reviving it and we're keeping it alive so thank you so much for your work thank you i think it is important to note that experiences while they are unique to different cultures many cultures experience similar things and it's important to recognize that everyone has their own past and history. While it may be similar, there are some, um, I just think it's interesting to recognize that connection that you can build across cultures. Does anyone have any last minute thoughts or comments? If not, we can go ahead and move on to my next piece. Um, we'll go through the same thing again. It is about uh, missing murdered indigenous women. I will say that I focus a lot on words in this piece. So with that, I'll let you take a few minutes to take it in. Okay, I'll go ahead and start bringing it back in. Um, just to give some context, I will like read a short definition from Google of what MMIWG is, just so we're all kind of on the same page with some background. Um, so according to Google, <laughs> MMIWG is a mass movement in the US and Canada that is working to raise awareness of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. The organized marches, the building of databases, local community, civil council, and tribal council meetings, and domestic violence trainings for police. Um, so with that little blurb, does anyone have any initial thoughts? Hi, Trinity. I'm going to unmute my mic. I hope that there's not noise at my house. But I just wanted to say that the, the last part that I recognized in your piece was the side part that's, that's printed um, horizontally. And it just struck me that those are the facts. And they're hidden there in the piece, just like the facts are hidden from public view. And it was amazing the way you just, you know, wove that in. And I just wanted to ask you, was that um, purposely done to where the viewer would just kind of catch that by surprise, just like in the public, we're not even aware of this um, issue. Thank you, Trinity. Yeah, thank you actually for recognizing that. Um, that was very intentional. I went back and forth on like making it darker to be more visible or not, but I kind of thought it was a nod to how hidden and hard to find information about this and how it is not covered in the media. Does uh, anyone else have any thoughts? Hello, um, I'm Cynthia coming in from Seattle, Washington. Um, I That was the first part I noticed was the side and how it resonated with me was that you had really have to kind of crane your neck, turn sideways to look at it and it's a little uncomfortable. And really to look at this issue, you have to get to a level of discomfort and um, straining to find information. Um, but, but again, just very well done the way you integrated that in. Thank you. Um... Any other initial thoughts or shall I ask a question? 
I actually have something to say. I'm um, from Canada and I'm from uh, Plains Cree from Piapot. Um, I know it says pipeline, but it's Piapot, P-I-A-P-O-T. Um, so, and I moved to um, Pennsylvania two years ago. So it's nice to see other, other indigenous people. Um, I haven't seen much here, uh, but um, I was a police officer in Saskatchewan where there's a lot of missing and murdered indigenous women. So I just wanna say thank you. Uh, I wanna recognize a couple of comments people have put in the chat. Um, Jesse and Farina, I hope I'm not messing that up. Um, thanks for your input. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I forgot them all. Um, yeah, um, Farina recognized the women standing together at the bottom. Um, the rest of the silhouettes are very powerful and deep. And she said, we are all sisters. And I think that is important to recognize that this isn't just like one tribe or one area. It is a collective um, movement and problem we're having. Um, does anyone else want to say anything? Hi, Trinity. Oh. This is um, Sally Wilson um, um, from Tahlequah, Cherokee Nation. Um, and I, I guess we're wanting some clarification on what's in the handprint. But something else that stood out to us was the um, L in stolen mm -hmm. all the way down. To me, it kind of signifies drawing a line in the sand. Uh, you know, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna take this anymore. We're, we're gonna draw a line in the sand to, to stand up um, and speak up. So if you could just clarify that, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So I actually went and did a little bit of research on how different languages say woman or girl. Um, and so embedded in there is just a bunch of repeated um, woman, <laughs> just to like kind of further the fact that this is happening to like females of um, women, basically. Um, yeah, <laughs> I hope that helps. I really just wanted to like put emphasis on that. Um, Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. My biggest thing with this piece is really just to spread awareness. And I think going through the project really showed me that art is important, not only in terms of like you see history and you like see art, but more in the fact that it can do something today. Like it can help in your own lifetime. Like it won't be something that is only looked at in the like future. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Um, so does anyone have any other thoughts about um, this piece? Um, there, there's there's some more remarks in the chat. Oh, okay. It's hard to keep track of. Uh, but he's also reclaiming languages, knowing their names, recognition of women, indigenous language. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, Courtney and Aiden, um, I love your point on that it's not very known, and I think it is important to like help spread awareness that we all can hopefully do a little bit, and maybe we can end up seeing some change. Um, the Anna Jackson, the first thought I had was the handprint looks like a child's handprint. The handprint is actually yeah kind of closer to mine. I kind of had to use some like Google references, but it is a small handprint. <laughs> um, maybe think how much this impacts families, communities, and how hard it can be to find closure and loved ones that go missing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I really wanted this to be very like impactful and that you really feel something. <laughs> I think that is a big part of art is that it can cause emotions. And um, they can be happy, sad, um, but what makes a piece impactful is if it tells you a story or if it makes you feel something in my opinion. Um, so if anyone has anything else to say on this piece, please speak up now or we'll go ahead and keep on moving forward. <laughs> I'll take that as a keep on <laughs> keeping on. Um, so this next piece is about the scorched earth policy and this is not done by me. 
Um, it is done by Ryan Singer, who is a Navajo artist from New Mexico. Um, his Facebook link is on the, the slide I'm sharing. Um, I did ask for permission, so <laughs> just to put that out there, we are good to discuss and look at it. Um, but yeah, if you want to check them out, that'd be good. And then we'll go ahead and take a few minutes to look at it. Yeah, I hope you all had some time to take it in. Uh, I'm not going to say much at first <laughs> unless anyone wants me to like kind of give a brief rundown of scorched earth policy. Um, but I will open up to initial thoughts before I kind of dive into that. If no one has anything to say, I will go ahead and explain it first and then I will be asking you guys questions. <laughs> um, so as Ryan Singer put on um, his post about this piece, he said scorched earth policy refers to the campaign led by Lieutenant Colonel Kit Carson against the Navajos in 1863. He and the US Cavalry captured any Navajo they could, destroyed their homes, killed their livestock and burned their crops. He rounded up over 8,000 Navajos and marched them over 300 miles to a concentration camp at Bosque Rondondo in southern New Mexico. This was the precursor to the infamous Long Walk. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of background what he was trying to address in this piece. Um, let's see, oh, I see some things in the chat. Thank you, Courtney and Aiden. Um, I love how you address the coffee cup um, and just said it's just another day at the office. Um, I think that is very strong in this piece as it kind of signifies like the two sides and like their own like outlook on what actually happened. Um, does anyone have any thoughts? I like how um, uh, the the, the they're they're running from the or the rebels are running and uh that they put up the fight constantly and uh in star wars that's what the rebels stand for is uh the fight that seems like it's over and pointless and uh natives all of us have fought continuously to survive you know um even through separate languages and separate cultures um even a hundred miles away we have completely separate cultures but we're all the same people and uh, we're part of this earth and we're here to protect it so that that's cool rebels won in the end <laughs> thank you for your comment i think it is interesting how um he really includes like something that's very contemporary and modern and that many of us have seen or like kind of know even if you've never seen like the movies you like can recognize the character so i guess can we kind of dive into that um we just learned about like the resistance which is a small um, ship in the middle um but can anyone tell me who what character is at like the forefront of this piece in terms of star wars and who that is probably symbolizing I'm sure someone knows okay there we go in the chat thank you that is darth vader um and as Tammy put it, the government. Um, thank you for making that connection for me. Um, Do you the mind? Empire. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the coffee thing took me a little bit in a different direction. I hope okay. you don't mind. Okay. And it, it relates to the idea of it's not actually something that 
is a euro derived thing. Um, so, you know, it coffee even comes from um, Africa and Asia. And so the fact that it's here in North America has its own story to it. And so that was that was the first thing that I was drawn to was that just kind of reality. And then somebody in the comments made a point. Oh, it was Dr. King about it looking like oil. And it's just it's it to me, it kind of was like a a, a sludge, like a legacy of just taking something from one place and putting it somewhere else and that sort of thing. So I kind of went in a different direction and I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, I don't mind that. I, that is a great um, like path to take. Does anyone have anything to add on to that? Uh, we can also ask questions. Um, One one person wrote Darth reference, not my father. That is an interesting point. Um, I feel like there's a lot you can try to think and make connections here. Um, but overall, I think the piece is pretty powerful in showing a piece of history um, and trying to connect something to something that many people don't have much knowledge of to something that they like do know which i think is a great way to kind of build on that you can teach history you can showcase stories and um, pass through art in this way um someone said something in the chat thank you <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, for me the thing that sticks out is how vader sits and comfortably my representation of comfortable people yeah so i think that is kind of building on the whole um who is who and how they approach this entire, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking for the word. I agree with Tom's comment also. I, I saw it as detachment, just mm -hmm. indifferent about this destruction. Yeah, um, so I guess we kind of broke down a lot of what the piece is right now. Um, can we kind of dive into like what it makes you feel or what like any emotions you kind of, um, get from viewing this piece? Um, so I'm a I'm as well a, a descendant of the long walk uh, survivors and I know um, many Americans are familiar with the Trail of Tears if they hear that phrase not as many of long walk but also mm -hmm. not realizing that there's series waves of forced removals like more than one Trail of Tears they're called different things, um, you know, in different terms by different peoples, but especially what's powerful about this, um, though uh, there's been several other artistic depictions that are just gut-wrenching and so heartbreaking as it is, but something about this is um, a question of as well justice um, that, you know, Darth Vader's coming from behind, he has them on target, um, and the land, like no one's brought up the landscape of, of this beautiful land and, and it's like a struggle over that land and, and where the oil comes up. Um, so it's interesting because other images I've seen of the long walk, you know, showing the people, the actual faces and the suffering. Um, this is, you know, taking us back as well and and connecting to like pop culture, the Star Wars, and how that's also powerful, letting us, uh, you know, enabling us to use these terms of resistance that we also, even though at this moment, I, I liked the one um, comment recently of the rebels win in the end, right? So it also has like that last hope connecting it to pop, uh, pop culture and, and these other indications, even though at this moment it's like, oh, it doesn't look good for the rebels right now but we also are connecting this to the stories we know. And um, it's really amazing in that way. So thanks for uh, engaging us in, in this conversation. Thank you. I love well, that whole entire thought. Um, does anyone have any other thoughts, lingering questions about this piece? If not, um, we can go ahead and kind of round it out to the end. <laughs> Um, the one comment that was in here about it's like all a game, I think that's a really important point to make because there are so many people who just look at so much of life 
as though it's on a screen and so it's not real and it's and and I think that 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 was also something um of the time period for you know well for any of the the captive narratives to the to the long walk and and subsequent you know we have these different portrayals through newspaper through social media whatever it is and people just consume whatever's going on without truly thinking about the implications to the people who are being mistreated. Yeah, that is really something to think about. That actually got me thinking about like my own education and like how I've come to learn about a lot of these things. And a lot of that hasn't been in the classroom and what is in the classroom is very glazed over and it's very like two seconds, like two sentences. Um, so that kind of like relates to how like you just see it on the screen, like it's not real. Like when you read it in a big textbook, it doesn't feel real. Like I think there's definitely something that like is missing in terms of like learning about um, parts of history in that way. Um, so I guess with that, we'll go ahead and end unless anyone I, has any oh, last minute thoughts. <laughs> I actually have one more thought. Um, okay. Just, it's interesting that Luke is, well, likely, um, Luke is like flying away from Darth Vader there. And that's an interesting point. Um, just, I'm of Hawaiian background and I was raised in um, middle-class white America, one generation um, away from my islands. And uh, I've spent the better half of my adult life rediscovering who I am, um, my people, trying to connect with my people and uh, all of that. And it's interesting because this entire thing depicts um uh that that journey of luke literally finding out that he's well darth vader's son possibly and that sorry spoil alerts if you haven't seen it um, <laughs> um and that uh that his entire journey is wrapped around that i mean discovering who he is um getting back to the magic of the good of the force and using it and um that's uh, what we represent, um, especially younger generations, I feel, um, uh, coming in um, to the world and bringing in uh, this kind of graphic work and the kind of work that you're doing and different viewpoints and really inheriting what we have left behind. So, uh, so I guess my own final thoughts, I'll go ahead and say. Um, so overall, I keep bringing up art, history, um, connections and awareness. And I really hope that this entire activity, while it may not have gone super in depth on like any one of the topics, um, I hope it got you thinking and maybe you heard something new or it made you think of something that you wouldn't have thought of yourself. Um, and I just hope that you take that with you um, going forward because there is art all around us and it isn't always in like a 2D print um, painting form. Um, so I think that is very important and I'm definitely learning myself a lot about art and like my own what is important to me in terms of art and also that this is like about our own culture and our own history and overall I just hope this was a fun and thought-provoking exercise and you leave with a great appreciation for art and all the importance that it does have. Um, so with that um, Professor Tony, if you have any closing thoughts or if anyone has any lingering thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Yes, uh, thank you, Trinity. I thought that was a, a wonderful uh, discussion and presentation of your very fine work. And I would just say I put into the chat my uh, email, so I welcome uh, anyone to uh, consider collaborating, joining me with taking a next step. Uh, my hope is that Trinity's work is one step towards something uh, that will be sustainable and lasting. And uh, I really feel that it can make a, a difference working together as a diverse community. So I look forward to that. Um, I saw a lot of you were focused on awareness, which is so important. Uh, too often uh, dominant cultures overwhelm uh, individual cultures and um, any, anything we can do to work together to uh, change that dynamic would, would be uh, very important and impactful. So thank you again, Trinity, for your work. And, and uh, since we have a few more moments, I open it up to any comments or thoughts from anyone. Uh, and uh, th thank you to the uh, sponsors of this program. You've been wonderful to give us this opportunity. Thank you. Trinity, I'm just, I think I'm going to speak for a lot of people here, but you're an undergrad, right? 
Yeah, I'm in my second year. Okay, so you're a sophomore. Okay, yeah. that, was, that was outstanding. And I just want you to know that you were able to keep all of us captivated and get us engaged. And I just wanted to let you know that like, I seriously, as a teacher, like I actually want to cry with happiness because I'm so um, thankful for you. Thank you. Um, my mom is actually a teacher. Um, she's here today. She just hasn't said anything because I'm nervous, mm -hmm. um, but thank you. Hi, mom. <laughs> I have a question. Um, sorry, I, I love this work and I think it's wonderful how much, you know, an image, it touches us, it says so much, it unpacks so much, you know, and that um, connection. So especially with digital art, how it, there's these different mediums of art too now, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it, all the digital connections and multimodal and multimedia, all that. Um, so I'm curious about, and I kind of put this where I said, I would like to learn more. You mentioned STEM and the connection and you're at MIT. So was this for, could you tell us a little bit about the background or your advisor about the background of how these works were produced, created, um, a little bit about the process. Was this for a class, um, an assignment? You know, that would be wonderful to learn from as well. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this was actually a undergraduate research opportunity project that was posted by uh, my mentor, Professor Tony, under um, Michelle de Graff, um, who are both here <laughs> to support me. Um, so they just, I saw this like posting online. It was for our January term, which is just one month. So it's only four weeks to get a lot done. Uh, but it was very open. And Professor Tony just asked us like to either make an educational resource or some kind of art piece to explore how our own culture fits into our lives and our university. Um, so I want to try something new, like I had said, and I decided to go with art and I am not an artistic person by any means. So I figured graphic art would be a very, you know, easy way to kind of, you know, make it look nice <laughs> without me having to develop too many skills. Um, so I made a schedule. Um, I was also taking a class, so I really had to plan my time. And I did basically a piece. I did four in total. The two you saw, um, one about the reservation system and another about lost languages. And so I come, did one each week. <laughs> and then that is pretty much how that went by. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see Professor DeGrasse comment in the chat, what's next? Uh, you know, I'm not sure right now. I'm very um, busy with classes as things are kind of getting to the end, but I do hope to continue this. Um, I want to get it somewhere on campus, like on the wall, like permanently. Um, that is one of my goals. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Um, but I also hope to make more art and really just spread it. And because I think art has such a potential to spread awareness. Yeah, just also to say um, about that question of what's next, something to consider is like service learning. Mm -hmm. These are images that could be, and I think they could resonate with all, like all ages, like really great <laughs> teaching tool for K through 12. And it might be something you could bring to the Department of Diné Education, for example, Dodi. Have you thought about that or like- I have not. <laughs> that is a great thought. I'll have to look into that and see what I can hopefully do. Right, thank, thank you, Farina. I think that's a terrific suggestion. And also like if you want, I can put my contact info in because I'm also trying to collaborate with them. Like for instance, they're using, um, in Navajo education even, um, they're using a textbook uh, about Navajo government that is pretty outdated. It's been revised, mm -hmm. but it's often done by non-Native scholars, um, non-Dene scholars. And this is like for our scholarships, like the Manuelito scholarship, you're required to take a Navajo government class or like some cultural classes or language classes. And so these kind of materials are very important for those um, learning materials that we're, we're trying to work and collaborate with different Dene scholars of, um, you know, bringing images from our own uh, communities and, and youth would be great too, that, that 
even though you said I'm impressed, you know, I think you certainly have artistic uh, skill here as we see in some of the chat. Um, so yeah, I'll share my email and that'd be, I can help draw those connections if you like, or if other folks, other folks said, you could share this with the Museum of the American Indian. You know, there's a lot of museums as well that are centers mm -hmm. for um, educational resources too, that um, teachers go to them to ask, well, what kind of materials are those? So there's several like museums um, that I'm sure in your area that it could be mm -hmm. connected to a kind of toolkit that they have for educators. Yeah, I'll definitely, I would definitely get, love to get in touch. I did, um, get the receive the chief Manuelito scholarship so I do know like um what you're talking about I took a government course online through a community college and the textbook was a little bit old for sure um so yeah that really kind of hits <laughs> so I just would like to again thank Trinity and Dr. Tony for um being with us today and uh thank you Trinity for sharing your work um it's really it, it's always really nice for me because I too am a fellow artist and you know do graphic design for our department and am always excited to see other people you know creating art and especially for those that have a really deep connection to our um, native culture and our history and um, sharing your message through your vision and the way you see it and the way it, it can connect to uh, so many others and they can you know interpret it in their own way and take away so much more from it than you know we as artists might even dream of so i, I really thank you for that um there we do have a um a google survey that we would like for our attendees to take and that will uh, be placed in the chat so if you could take a few minutes to or a few moments to complete that we'd greatly appreciate it and um, another thing that I wanted to quickly mention is um, I greatly appreciate the work that you did related to the MMIWG uh, epidemic that is happening within um, the United States and in Canada as well. And um, we are current, our office is currently in our third year of hosting an art show that is um, related to that movement as well as the Me Too movement. And that is currently uh, happening here at a, a gallery downtown here in Tahlequah. And if you're interested in looking at the artwork that was submitted this year, uh, you can visit our, um, our, webs our uh, Facebook page, the NSU Tribal Studies Facebook page. And it has um, some images that you can check out. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm just, and it also being a Sexual Assault Awareness Month, it's uh, a really great connection to tie those two together to raise awareness of, about this issue. And so I'm really glad that you had a piece related to that and could share and initiate conversations. And hopefully, you know, those who attended today can continue those conversations and uh, continue to raise awareness. Um, so uh, again, there is a link to um, a survey that we'd like for our participants to take part in. And um, just before we close, are there any other uh, last comments that you would like to make? I just want to thank everyone for participating. <laughs> um, really helped make this work well for me. Thank you. I would also like to thank everyone a wonderful conversation and as soon as this pandemic is over I hope to visit Oklahoma sometime. Yep, Come visit us. <laughs> well again thank you to uh, each of you for joining us today and um, sharing your work and your thoughts and your message and and to everybody who uh, joined in today and sharing your thoughts as well. Maro.